Hello everybody, I am, my name is Drew, and uh, I'm going to try to start a YouTube channel, just for fun. I started one a while back, and I did it for like, I uploaded like a game, but I didn't like do anything after that, I played Skyrim, which is uh, one of my favorite games, um, but I have, um, I recently started, uh, recently, like back in August, started really getting into computer programming. Um, and started a uh, started going to school. So right now I'm a student uh, in Ecole Carondeau or uh, School 42 in Paris. Um, and one of the things that we do there is uh, we don't get to use very many uh, functions, or we don't get to use the standard library really at all, except for like a couple things. And so um, what I wanted to do is just for like my first just first video to kind of like practice like making a video. I just want to explain how uh, one of my functions works. Uh, one of the functions I made for my libft project. The libft project is library 42. Uh, basically, we don't get to use the standard library. We have to use our own library that we make ourselves. And so this is one function that is included. Um, so I figured I might as well explain it because it's a little, little interesting. So um, at 42, we have this header. We always start with, it's like just a commented out header. Um, and it's just got, you know, who made it, the date it was created, and the uh, uh, the name of the file and stuff. Um, so right after that we have our include. We're going to include our header file. Um, let me see if I can pull up the header file for you. So my includes folder. Uh, we'll open up that. Let's go pull it over here. Um, the header file really just, uh, you can see I have a whole bunch of these includes. These are mostly for definitions. Um, so we're not allowed to really use any functions other than like read, write, malloc, free, uh, and like a couple other ones. But we are allowed to use definitions like um, size t and other stuff like that. So um, I have a bunch of includes uh, that really, um, even like even like standard IO, Sometimes I put it in the include just so I can use it in a testing uh, file, which we, we can go through the testing. Um, but sometimes I include stuff that is uh, we're not actually allowed to use, but I include it because um, uh, I can use it during testing or whatever, and that's totally allowed. But anyway, we have a uh, this is our header file for our libft. It's really just got our our function declarations. So we include that. Um, and then this is it. It's very short. I have a little doc string here because I like to code in Python, and so doc strings are nice. Um, to kind of explain what it is and how it works. So it is a recursive function, which means that it calls itself, um, and it essentially what it does is we start with a large number, um, and then what it does is it uh, checks if it's positive or negative, divides it by ten, and then passes that to itself. And so every time it divides it by 10, the number gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And then whenever it finally is no longer divisible by 10, it starts writing which digit it is. And then we go back up the call stack. Um, and what that means is that, for example, let's say we have um, a nine digit number. We're gonna basically take that number and check if it's positive or negative. And then let's say it's positive. We're gonna pass, we're gonna divide it by 10. So we chop off the last digit. Uh, and then we pass it back up to, we're going to call it again. And then that's going to chop off the last digit again. It's going to divide by 10. Uh, and then we just keep chopping off digits, basically, until we're left with, like, if it's a nine-digit number, we're going to call it nine times. And then at the very end, we're going to have a single digit. Whenever we have um, that, it what it does is it actually just writes it. So it's going to write it to a terminal or a file descriptor. Um, the terminal is file descriptor one. If you want standard out, um, I realize that there's probably a lot of stuff that doesn't make a lot of sense as I describe this, especially if you're brand new to C. Um, cause this is this is all written in C. Um, but I can continue to explain some of these things because I feel like whenever I first started uh, coding in C, it was kind of hard to find. Um, there's not a lot of people out there that are coding in C anymore. A lot of people are really into like, I don't know, JavaScript for example is very, very popular. Python's super popular. I, I do like Python a lot. Um, 
but there's not a lot of people coding in C. It's really, it seems like it's mostly university students that are coding in C, and it's because their professors make them. But uh, C is a wonderful language. It's uh, very, very precise, very particular. So it's not super beginner friendly, but it's, you can be very precise with it, which is very useful in some ways. Um, so I'll just step through the function real fast. So we have a void function, which means that it doesn't return anything. We have our function name, and then we have two arguments. Um, first one is an integer called n, and then the second one is an integer called fd, which stands for file descriptor. Uh, we have a long, which is n, or our number, nb long. Whoops, just changed something. And then we have a character, c. So what we do is we take uh, our number long, which is currently undefined, um, or uninitial uninitialized, I'm sorry. Um, we're going to take n, which is our input, and we're going to cast it to a long. The reason for this is we are going to check if it's positive or negative, and our function has to be able to use um, int max and int min. And so if we divide int min by negative 1 to make it positive, int min is, uh, um, you know what, I might need to, uh, oh yeah, this is a YouTube video, so I can just put somewhere on screen uh, what int min is and what int max is, and you'll see that they're, if you just get rid of the minus sign, they're different by one. One ends in a seven, the other one ends in an eight. And so if you take one and you uh, just remove the sign, what it's gonna do is it's gonna wrap around because it's, uh, that's the way numbers work, is basically you reach all ones, and then if you add one to 32 spaces of, 32 bytes, hold on, 32 bits of uh, all ones and you add one to it, it wraps around, it becomes all zeros, right? That's essentially what's happening. So we don't want that to happen. So what we do is we cast it to a long. Instead of having 32 bits, a long is 64 bits. Um, and then what if we cast it to it, what if we, we don't wrap around anywhere, basically. That way we can then chop off the one, rather than the negative sign. Um, so you see we cast it to a long. We have uh, NV if it's less than zero. So if we have a negative number, we're going to write immediately to the um, terminal, we're going to write a negative sign uh, to file descriptor, to the file descriptor, and we give it one because in the write function that tells us how many characters to write for this string. This string that we're passing is actually two, um, uh, two bytes long, we have a negative sign, and then we have a null terminator, so we're basically saying just write the first, uh, which is a negative sign. This if statement the way that this works is we're going to check the number and we're going to divide it by 10 and if it's uh, not 0, as long as it's not 0, we're going to continue uh, into this. And that basically is uh, we're going to continue into um, to call ourselves basically. If we divide by 10 and we get 0, what that means is that, let's say we had 9 uh, numbers, it means we keep chopping off every single time, we are now left with 0 the last time that we call it, you know, because let's, the way the numbers work in uh, code is like, if you have 5, 5 divided by 10 is 0. It's not 0 0.5. Um, that's a float. So in integers, you just, there is no decimals. You just chop it off. So uh, we are left with 0. And so that would mean that we're at the end of the number. So basically we check, are we at the end of the number? If not, we're going to call ourselves and we're going to divide it by 10. If we are, then we continue down here. If our number is less than zero, so we have a negative number, um, this will only happen, I believe, the first time that the function is called. So um, we are just gonna, if we have a negative number, um, we take that mod 10 to get the last digit, we multiply it by a negative one to make it negative, and then we add to it uh, this, this zero character. The single quotes means that you have a character. It's not a zero number. It's a character, which has an ASCII value. Um, I could try to pull that up. You could do man ASCII. Um, you'll see here we have decimal zero is null, but if we're looking for this character, 
the decimal, right, we have char, decimal value of that character, of the zero character, is 48. So in effect, what we're really doing is we're adding 48 to whatever number that is. And that's because we are saving this in C, which is a character. A character is really just an integer, but it's only one byte long instead of four bytes long. Um, four bytes is 32 bits, one character, one byte, eight bits. So that's how that works. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to write that character later. Um, so we do that for negative numbers. If it's not a negative number, we don't multiply it by negative one. Simple as that. And then we write them all to the uh, to the terminal. Pretty. We write them in uh, in a descending fashion because every time we call the function, what we're doing is we're adding to a like a function stack, and then whenever we come back, we're taking off the stack. And so let's say we have like a number that's nine digits long. We chop off the end, right? We keep chopping, and when we get to the very end, what we're doing is we're like right, 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 right. So we're going basically to the end of the number and then we're writing one at a time so that we can uh, you know, write the number to the terminal basically or the file descriptor or whatever we decide to write to. Alright, so that's the function. Um, let's write a main uh, a main program because that's just a function. If we um, uh, if we actually write a program I can show you how it works a little bit. So. Uh, we're gonna vim, let's call it test uh, put number dot c, and then we're gonna do, we're gonna include our libft, which is uh, at this folder, libft dot h. Um, we'll do int main and put it in our stuff. Cool. All right. And then all we have to do is call our function. So um, we'll say ft put number fd. We're going to pass it. Remember, it takes two arguments. We have an integer and a file descriptor. Um, our integer, we can do like, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, um, just to test it real quick. Um, and our file descriptor, we're going to do one. File descriptor one is just whatever terminal you're using, um, and then that should write one two three four five to the terminal. So uh, if I did everything right, that should work. We have to compile our program, so we do test put number dot c, do gcc. I'm going to do an output called uh, test put number, um, and then I'm also going to add the g flag. Uh, oh, what happened? No file or directory. Let's see what I did wrong. Oh, it's in includes. It's not in there. So let's in test put number. We're in libft includes. Save that. Run our compile. We failed again. This is very common in C. It's totally okay. Um, you just have to kind of work through them, you know? Um, so undefined reference to ft put number, which means that it did not find my header, I suppose. So because my header should have ft put number in it, ft put number fd, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, I am going to uh, cut the video here. Okay, um, I figured out what the problem was. It was uh, actually quite simple. I did two things. I forgot to uh, compile my FT put number using my make file. Um, if you're interested, I can make a video on make files and how you can use them to make static libraries and stuff like that. Um, but I forgot to, my project file was just um, just the uh, uncompiled source code, so I had to run the make to create the uh, the archive of the object files or the static library. And then second, I forgot the link. So uh, you do GCC for your compiler, 
you have your uh, your source code test put number dot c, which is the the main that we just used. Then we have g for gdb, which just in case you need a debug, you can use gdb. Um, this essentially keeps any like labels so that you can say break main break whatever instead of uh, GDB just having address memory addresses it can actually use like the names of the files that you have in there or the functions that's very useful capital L uh, tells you uh, where to look for um, for linking so for example, I have LFT, that means I'm going to link libft, you can drop the lib, and then FT is left after it, so it's going to look for a, uh, basically libft.a, and it's going to link that in, and this capital L is telling you which directory to go look for libft.a. Um, and then we have an output test put number. So, uh, you'll learn, like, if you're just beginning, you'll learn bit by bit what all these little things mean. It could be really confusing at first, uh, but the more you do it, the more you, you get better at it. It's uh, it's like any other skill, really. So, um, anyway, we just compiled, so now we can try to run it. Uh, not 8 out. we're going to do test put number. And there you go. The output is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then this percent sign means... Uh, I don't know if it means end of line or end of file. I think it's just end of line. Um, but it means that there's no new line character. That's all for right now. Um, yeah, that's just a really quick explanation of uh, put number. Nothing nothing very fancy, but it is a recursive function, which is kind of interesting. It calls itself. Um, and then maybe in my next video I can explore exactly how it works at GDB. So you can see as we step through exactly what's being passed. I think that'd be kind of interesting, actually. Um, so, but for right now, that's just uh, making making the file basically uh, the source code of the function, um, a make file which we didn't really explore, but uh, there is uh, creating the static library, linking it with these uh, compiler commands, um, and then import or including it into uh, your source file. Um, a lot of little basic parts we didn't really talk super in depth about any of them, but. Uh, but if you're brand new to this, this could be useful. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching.